right train. That's the train for the city. It's like I just missed it. Uh, it's rush hour. Hi. How bad is it? Oh, 4.35. Okay, yeah. And train, they'll, they'll be playing. They should come, they kind of, they come every three to ten minutes. Sometimes um, they're one behind the other. Specifically if it's a, uh, if it's like a Q and a B, meaning like local and then express. They kind of follow each other because they diverge a certain tracks.
here for uh, two hours now? I played, I played one hour. I took a break. It's my second hour. It's done like a half an hour. So do you like, do you like this one better? I like the bottom one better. I like the bottom, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. This one is too yellow right now. So this might actually be good for in here. Yeah. Jackson to it. What's that? It's got a little Michael Jackson to it. It is Michael Jackson. That's it? Yep. Got a lot of ones on there. So you like some classic stuff too? Yeah, I mean, the classic stuff is what inspired me. The reason I started singing was uh, I got in my dad. My dad, so I don't come from a music, musical family at all. My dad's an English professor. My mom's an ethics professor. Neither of them really listen to music very frequently. And my dad just somehow knew that buying me a Stevie Wonder CD for Christmas was going to inspire me to sing. He just, so he bought me Songs in the Key of Life. And, um, you know, from that point on, I just became obsessed with singing. And owe that to him. My younger brother lives in the city here. Uh, he, uh, he does sales. Lives on lives way up. Um, Is he married? No. You don't. Uh, you don't stay with him? No. I, he actually moved to the city before I did. Oh, okay. But um, you know, we're, we're, we're close. But um, we've been getting together more and more frequently. Do you guys have any song requests? <laughs> What do you like? What do you like to listen to? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? What is that? They're asking what do you know? Oh, what do I know? What do you know? It's different living on your own. Yeah. You wake up tomorrow, what am I going to eat? You know? Yeah. It's not like I'm going to eat my brother's food. Right. Wall Street food. Right. It's probably like some sushi and some expensive pasta. <laughs> It's different living yeah, we, on your own. We stick with the pizza, the dollar slices. <laughs> the dollar slices. Oh. 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 What are you playing? playing on the subway floor? Uh, maybe like four or five months, not too long. Really? And you moved here, so as soon as you moved here, you start playing? No, so I moved here two years ago. Yeah, when I come to her, it's when the sun goes down. She takes away my troubles, takes away my pain. She takes away my heart. And, uh, yeah, two years ago, so I mean, a year for a year and a half, I was just working at a bar, you know, working on my music, focusing on that kind of stuff. And then, summertime at my bar gets real slow. I guess you know, it's like a New York thing; like everybody goes out of town. And so I just I needed a second job. And um, then one of my friends hired, works in the city, uh, works in Jersey City for the city. And she was like, "Hey, we need some musicians up and down Newark Ave. Newark Ave is sort of like this like." This street with like all these shops that are opening up, all these restaurants. Who told you this? What's that? Who told you this? This is one of my good friends who oh, works okay. for the city. And she was like, hey, we, we want to hire some musicians to, to play on the street to make it look like it's a more vibrant thing going on right now. Sure. And so I said, all right. So I went out and I played for like two hours just randomly one day. 
and I made good money. I made like you know 150 bucks in a couple hours, and I was mm -hmm. like, all right, maybe I can do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I just kind of started experimenting and playing in New York. Really? Yeah. What did, What was the first thing you played? I mean, I had like a list of cover songs, but the thing is, in the beginning, the cover songs that I had under my own belt when I would play shows were kind of like obscure covers that like I was into, but like I don't think a lot of other people would be into. So for a while, it, it, it took me some time to actually start building up a repertoire of like radio songs. Because mm -hmm. that's what, I mean, that, that was actually interesting that when you came down, you, you were telling me to play my own song. Mm -hmm. And like, I never play my own stuff down there, hardly. Because mm -hmm. people, number first off, people want music quick. So I only play short versions of songs. I don't play like the whole three and a half minutes. I play like 45 seconds. And I, I tend to gravitate towards the songs that everybody knows. You know, like my instinct, you know, Adele just put out a new song. My instinct was not to learn that new song because like, you know, you want to do... My instinct as an artist is to do something different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. But then, and so I was going to learn like one of the, like a track off of her old record that I really liked. But everybody, you, I, I don't know if you were there, but like a couple girls came up to me and they were like, play that Adele song. Mm -hmm. Thanks, what's your name? I'm learning an Adele song. Are you talking about the new one? They're like, yeah, the new one. I was like, all right. You know. So you're trying to be unique, but at the same time, you also have to make a little money. Exactly. Like my instinct is to is to you know is to not follow the trend. You know, it's, but there there is a need. You know, if I want to make money, I gotta like I gotta listen to what I gotta at least acknowledge what people are asking for. You were, you were telling me earlier that uh, um, the rush hours and things like that, just see if you can... So, when I, when I go to play, I usually... My favorite times are like between 2 and 5, and then like 7 to 10. Those are like the, the prime times for me, because rush hour, I feel like everybody comes down come down the, to the bottom of the stairs, they're like anxious to get home, they like aren't really interested in, they're just not like open. And um, so, but if the people who come down between two and five and seven and ten, those people are kind of like, you know, they're like luxuriating around, they're just like, they came to, you know, they're taking their time getting to where they're going. And so, and also the, the, the other thing is that the trains come less frequently. So they're sitting around waiting and you know they get bored and, and they, they it gives them the the opportunity to, to overhear you and to kind of like get into you and like start digging you and then like you know turn around and I love it when, the, when when there's like a crowd that's, that surrounds you while you're playing, and then it's like, you know, it's like it's almost like a stage. Like you you, you created a stage out of nothing, and everybody there is is enjoying it, and they're clapping, and they're filming, and they're you know, interacting with you, requesting songs, coming up to you, asking you, you know, like I had, I had another person today ask if I taught guitar lessons. Um, so I love that. I love the interaction. Um, 
And when the trains aren't as frequent, it gives the opportunity for that community to, to take place. And the, the cool thing about the subway, too, is that every five minutes, it's a whole new crop of people. So, I mean, like, you could kill it one five minute, you know, one five minutes, ten minute span, and everybody's, like, into it. And then the next group comes in, they have no clue what just happened. They can either be into it or they might not be into it. I've, I've had instances where they were really into it, one, one ten minute span, and then the next group came in and they didn't even pay attention. It's, it kind of blows my mind, because I'm thinking to myself, like, nothing changed. But at the same time, I met some really cool people. And, trying to also make money, you're also trying to get exposed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's why, so a couple weeks ago I saw this kid in the subway, and he was like DJing, but he had this enormous sign next to him with all these social media on it, and uh, it kind of inspired me to make that sign there, so like, I've only been playing with that for like a week or two now, but when I do play with it, it, it at least, you know, uh, I used to have people film me all the time, and they wouldn't tag me, they wouldn't uh, put hashtags and stuff like that, and like, find me online, but when they do this, when they film me now, they can't help but get my social media in in the video. Right. And so it like, you know, all their followers see who I am if they want. So get your name out. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely like a multi thing. It's like, you know, money, it's also exposure, it's also, you know, meeting people. I've, I've met some cool contacts here. And, um, what contacts have you made so far? One, I mean, one of the first times I ever came out and started playing Subway, a woman came up to me and she said, she's like, here, I really like you, I want to give you my name and number, and I, or I want you, I want to give you my friend's number, she's um, an ex a high up executive at Universal, and uh, I want you to send her some stuff, here's her name, look her up. Uh, you were telling me earlier some of your experiences. Talk to me about competition on playing outside. Mm. You, you know, I actually have not butted heads with anybody yet. They've all been like super cool. Um, there, there are some like old heads who've been playing there for you know in the subway for years, and um, they get a little territorial. Like that's their spot. But but there, technically, there's no licensure to play. No, that, well, no, that, that's actually not true. There, you, I should have a license to play. Okay. I'm doing this here illegally, I guess. Legal, the legal way to do it would be to, if I was just playing an acoustic guitar. But because I use an amplifier. So this is the amplifier that I use. The cool thing about this one is that most amplifiers, you have to plug them in. And this has the option of being plugged in or... It's battery operated. So, I'll show you on the back here. So you got a battery on it now? Yeah, double A batteries. Like cops. Once in a while we'll stop. Have you gotten tickets? I've gotten one ticket. Really? How much was it? 50. What? Yeah. That's like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> one hour, one hour. Um, We're gonna check if this outlet works. Ladies and gentlemen, Backpacks and other large containers. Yeah. Press yeah, right search by Remember this Lexington 59. You can run an extension cord from the <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Like, yo, you're making yourself at home. Right. No, but it was funny because like I started like when I first started, <clears throat> when I first started doing it, I went up to this guy, this young guy who was playing. I was picking his brain, you know, finding out what songs he likes playing, where he likes playing, how much he makes. And then I asked him about, like, you know, do you worry about the tickets? And he's like, like no, man, I just work that into my budget. You're working in your budget, that's he's an like, expense. You know, I'll, get, I'll get a ticket, you know, once a month. I just let, you know, that's, that's my $50 for a month. So it's like, what do you look at it that way. Tell me about the confrontation with the cop. What happened? The cop, the cop you know, the cop. Was it a security on the cover? Just 
No, the cops have been really actually kind of cool because um, <clears throat> a couple months ago there was that, that YouTube video that went viral. I saw it. Of the kid who was mm -hmm. downstairs, on the, uh, I think it was on the L. He was playing like a Pink Floyd song and a cop came up to him and said, you're doing this illegally, get out of here. And he, the kid said, no, you know what, I'm doing this illegally, check out the rules. And the cop's like, no, it's illegal. And the kid's like, takes out his phone, he's like, read section 5.2. The cop's reading it and he's like, and it is legal to be... And he got like pissed. And he so still he, was kicking him out. He still kicked the kid out and was kind of violent about it. And so it went viral. And um, I think it really raised a lot of awareness for people who play in the subways that you can't, that it is a legal thing to do. So the cops, for a bunch of months there, I felt, were coming up to me and being like, hey man, you sound really good. After the video yeah, after, viral? After the video went viral. They, like, I think they had maybe like their, their superiors had told them to like, Hey, if you're gonna do it, be really polite about it. Just ask them to move. You know. So I think it was almost like a PR move on their on their part to like trying to sure. like repair their image. Sure. And um, you know, so they were really kind of nice about it, but still asking you to move. And so, like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'll move. That means I'm gonna go to the next subway stop where you're not at. Right, right, right. Um, so yeah. he told you to move, and that's it. He gave no, you a ticket, and then he. No, they, like I've I've been told to move maybe like ten times. Uh, One time, a guy came up to me and was like, "The attendant complained about you. I don't care." But you know, he's like, he, he like stressed it. He's like, "I really don't care that you're playing here, but it was bothering the attendant." Was this so an attendant that it, it was like the booth was nearby where the music was? It or? wasn't that close. It was close enough, I guess, that like maybe when he spoke to the speaker, he could hear you. He could hear it or something. Gotcha. Yeah. Today, what happened? Uh, yeah. Was there a girl I was playing that where you wanted to play? So I got off the train uh, on the NQR. The girl was playing. It was just like a huge crowd there, like which I, I want to make a, a mental note that that's like a good spot to play. But she had this huge crowd that she was playing to, and I was kind of like, I was just in a bad mood this morning. Um, got off the train, and it, you know, nothing really happened. It was just kind of like the experience of carrying around this like heavy stuff on my back. It actually takes like, a physical toll. Like I'm now that I'm playing guitar at, like three hours a day. I'm starting to get like these uh, these neck pains that um, I need like you know weekly or, or bi-weekly massages just to like you know so my body can because it's like you're wearing this this strap that's that's pulling on you on one side constantly. I used to hear about uh, Kurt Cobain he had like a, like a a curvature in his spine, but I think that comes from you know just lugging around this weight on your back for hours on end. So, you know, there's there's the health thing, there's the physical thing where it's like you're carrying heavy stuff up and down stairs. So I got off the train, this girl was playing in a spot that I wanted, and I didn't confront her or anything. It was just, you know, you can you can in a nice way go up to them and just be like, hey, you know, you know, maybe put a dollar in their thing and be like, hey, how, how much longer are you going to be here? I'd like to play here. And, you know, they'll usually answer you, because like, I, I'll be like, maybe, it actually happened to me last Friday when I went to ask the place. Um, there was an old guy playing, and I wasn't going to go up to him, but he saw me with a guitar, and he's like, are you wanting to play next? And I was like, yeah. He's really? like, this is my last song. Like, That's right. awesome. So I just took his spot. Is there, uh, like, a little network for several musicians? Yeah. Well, a couple months ago, I played um, this thing called the Busker Ball. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a show put on by a guy who played, who's played in the subway for, like, 20 years. Uh -huh. And he, like, just pulled in musicians, and it was like, yeah, it's like a big, you know, family of musicians. Have you uh, like have you collaborated or have you networked with yeah, other? Yeah, there's this one girl named uh, Naja who is uh, Naja Lewis. She was on American Idol. Uh, I became good friends with her. Uh, she ended up we, we were good friends, and she kind of like you know, schooled me on the ins and outs of like etiquette. Oh, like okay. So you kind of had like a little apprentice type yeah. discipleship situation. Yeah. Have you met any guitarists or any musicians that like on the subway now and your friends you hang out or something? Uh, or you're like, hey, this is where I work. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, there is one guy that I bump into a lot. His name's Mo the musician. And he's sort of like, uh, he, we like keep on bringing up Astor Place because that's like my Friday night spot. But like, me and him kept on bumping into each other when we would go there. It's like he likes Astor Place too. Well, yeah, he liked, but like I think it was because it was like a secret spot because not other musician. There, he, what he told me is that uh, the attendant there used to be a big dick. He used to always like, you know, kick people out, get the call, get the cops called on people. Um, but he ended up getting fired and he left. Mm -hmm. And so musicians knew that that station had a reputation for being hard to play. But now that he was gone, the word hadn't spread that he was gone. And so like I just kind of stumbled into it like naively 
not knowing the, the reputation of the place. Sure, sure. And I started playing there. And then Mo would come in, kind of like peek in. He was like, "Oh, it's, it's a different attendant now." So like now, you know, Mo and I would text back and forth and be like, "Hey man, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go in there at 7. He's like, "Cool, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll come by at ten o'clock and take over your spot." Like, All right. So we would like work. That's out awesome. That works. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You have another job. I work at a bar. Which is nice. It's a nice feeling to, you know, to know that the job is there. You know, to actually, to, to, that's the money that I was saying that um, goes towards taxes. Okay. You know, so this is all off the books. So that's I mean, like your rent money, pretty much. No, I mean that's the thing is I make better money doing this. Really? Yeah. Um, but you're not confident enough to do this full time because it's kind of like. No, well, I am confident enough to do it full time, but then this money would be taxed, and then um, I also just mentally I would like. Well, I never want to do a job where it's like I hate where. Um, where you do it every day and it, it starts to become a grind and it becomes like annoying to you. Sure. So it's like, like I look forward to doing this. You know what I mean? Like I, the, when I work the bar on, on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it makes me go into Tuesday like dying to play. And I feel like if I worked, if I did this seven days a week, I'd probably start getting, you know, like the, like the annoyance that I mentioned, like when I just got off the train and lugging my shit around. I'm able to brush that off now because I still really appreciate what this. That's this whole that's your uh, till the soil job. Sure. Okay, um, you till the soil. It's like everybody like was kind of created to do something. Yeah. You know, and uh, so that but in that job you're realizing your passion because you don't really like bartending. No. Yeah. yeah. It's like your dishwashing job. Yeah, and like, I actually like bartending just because. I've met a lot of people, but no, I don't like the act of bartending. Right. It's a social. That's not, but that's not what you want to do for your career. You're right. a musician. Right. Okay. Where are you right now? In Brooklyn. I mean, do you want to come out? I'm, I'm in Manhattan right now. I'm, I'm up near where I told you I was going to be. Okay. Her friend's guitar. So oh, okay. Her friend is giving her a guitar, and now she's going to come meet me so I can tune it. That's it. She's going to go home and, and play with it after she tuned it. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. How long is she going to... How long? She said she's going to meet at like 9.20, she thinks. 9.20? So this, the story behind this guitar is that I bought a Taylor guitar a couple years ago thinking that I liked it and then I played it when I got home and I realized that I didn't like it at all but I loved the case so I kept the case returned the guitar and got a Takamini guitar instead this is a this is not a super well-known brand but it's um, I think it's I think it's really beautiful the cool thing about this guitar is that um, so old-fashioned guitar amplifiers have these things inside them called tubes, you know, like tube televisions and tube amplifiers, where you turn them on and it gives them, it gives, it takes a little while to warm up, but it's this very, like, warm sound. And inside of this guitar, they have little mini tubes. And so it's a rare feature for this, for a guitar to have. But when I plug it in, it gives it that, like, warmth that was actually lacking in the tailor. So the tube is that little thing right there. Gotcha. So it's like one of those uh, ham radio type deals. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, I don't remember actually, I don't remember how long ago I got this guitar. Maybe it's like five years ago or four years ago. Gotcha.
What's, uh, what's one of your favorite songs that uh, you've written? <laughs> Which song was that? Was that one? That, was that one of yours? No, that was very good. Do you have one of yours? Was it? You want to play one of yours? Sure. Alright. My favorite song right now that I've written um, is a song called... Um, our routine. It's off a. Of, it's off a, a record that I actually have not released yet. Um, should be out in the next few months. This is the uh, the first record that I put out though. It's, um, it's called Black Ink. Where'd you go to? You, where'd you go to school, man? To, um, to American University. put it out maybe two or three years ago um, has nine songs on it I picked my favorite song off this record I don't know I guess I like them all for different reasons I like I like Annie a lot it's the first track I like Ben's song no one escapes is, is a, I think it's a powerful song as well uh, the sounds I think is a little bit more progressive sounding so I like that one All of this is on SoundCloud? All of those? All this is on SoundCloud, yeah. Have you had luck selling that in the subway? Yeah, actually. Really? Um, yeah, I bring it with me and, you know, people will ask me. How many copies do you usually bring with you? I usually bring like two or three copies with me. For real? Yeah. Is there a day you sell all three of them or two of them? Uh, maybe over a couple days. Okay. Not all at once, yeah. Alright, cool, cool. Yeah.
Uh, I just need a water. No, water, please. Okay, this is regular water. Uh, cold? No cold. You don't have cold? I got it. You go take it here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. How much is it? Uh, this five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What would you define this crowd as? I mean, they're just waiting around. So this is the this is the crowd I was talking about before the seven to ten crowd, where it's like they came down just to, to they're going out in the evening or they're coming back and they're like more well, relaxed. It's perfect. All right, we're getting off on 34th, and we're going to meet Stephanie. That's his first. That's a student. It's not essential, but it's helpful. It's not essential, which is it's not essential but it's helpful. Because watch, I could just do it like a screwdriver. You know what I mean? Just, I loosened up that string. So, we have Where'd you travel from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn? I live yes. in Brooklyn too. Awesome. I was having a friend out. And I had to meet up with Chris. No, Chris is also my uh, 
to our teacher. So, hey, how'd you guys meet? Oh. Tell him. Tell him? Okay. So, um, it was after work at uh, Metro Tech. Um, I went downstairs to the J train. And I heard a beautiful sound, a beautiful tone. And, um, you know, no, that's cool. You know, random guy playing the guitar. And uh, something made me stop. I felt something told me to stop. So I stopped. I said, okay, let me stop. I'm like, why am I stopping? And he turns around, looked at me, and gave me this big smile. And I'm like, okay, this guy's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> you said something to me, though, didn't you? You said something kind of like. I turned back around and I looked at him again. He still was like playing. He, um, he played one of the songs, um, Thinking Out Loud, right? And the girls were going crazy in the corner. Woo! I'm like, okay, um, well, I believe in God, I have a relationship with God. So I was talking to God, I said, God, I don't have his five dollars. Um, you want me to give this five dollars to this guy? I felt a need to go give it to him and then encourage him. So I went to him, I said, hey, here's his five dollars, I've been sent here to, to encourage you. And he said, message received. <laughs> right? No, no, he said message delivered. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, he said something like that. Measure delivery, and I was like, okay, do you teach? I asked him, do you teach? He said, yeah, I can teach you. I said, do you I'll teach vocal as well? He said, I can try. And I was like, okay. Cool. Gotcha. I took his information, and since then we've been talking. Gotcha. Sounds like a, that sounds like a fun start. <laughs> It's like a fun story. It is a, yeah, it is a fun story. It is, it's interesting. So, this is perfect. I can practice and everything. Good to go. Chris, you're awesome, man. You're awesome. <laughs> Alright, But you're probably going to have to meet up in a week to tune it again. Because uh, I have to teach you how to tune it on your own. People, I wouldn't mind me. I don't mind, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to tune it. 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 Like, I'm not going to I gave her a day and she got the case, she got the guitar, she got Yeah, the... you're on it. Yeah, she's she's super on it. She says she's gonna be the best guitarist ever. Do you remember? Of course I do. I'm serious. He's I'm like, yeah. I know you're serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean what I say, what I say, what I mean. Are you gonna give him a lesson?
Are you familiar with the uh, whole Paris attacks? Yeah, I'm quite you are? Is it okay if I interview you for my show called Interviewing New Yorkers?